Hello friends and welcome to Sims 4 Horses vs Sims 3 Horses. In this video I aim to give you a clear cut comparison of many of the features and assets offered in both expansions, but do bear in mind that the Sims 3 Horse expansion was not only part of a larger pets expansion, but was also released in 2011. The Sims 4 Horse pack which is a dedicated pack was released in 2023. Let me know in the comments which Sims horse pack you like better and what features you like most. Starting off, we have horse art style and textures. Now, you can really see how The Sims 3 looks super dated compared to Sims 4. I will admit, because I modded The Sims 3 horses a lot when I was younger, I had forgotten what the base game models and textures actually look like, and it is not good. However, I will try to give credit here since I feel like Sims 3 horses were pointed in a more realism based direction for the style, but the main problem is what looked realistic in 2011 does not hold up 12 years later. Sims 4 have gone for a more stylized and cutesy approach in the textures. They are more cartoony and generally look more like Barbie doll versions of the horses. While this might not be to everyone's taste, I do believe this kind of style will hold up better in the long run, and for the purpose of this video, Sims 4 indisputably has better quality graphics. This is where Sims 4 horses gets into a bit of trouble. While you had your preset breeds and coat colours, you could change the size and shape of so many parts of the horse with sliders. Coat customization was even more in depth where you could add layers upon layers of these preset stamps. You could then individually manipulate each stamp by stretching and shaping it as well as changing the colour of each layer. The customization was seemingly endless on these horses and while that may seem incredible, it does have one fundamental drawback. When is lots of customization too much? For example, some people, myself included, are not very good at or interested in making extremely complex coats, but with most presets being a bit bland, we are essentially forced to use the advanced designer. Take for example, I want to make a sporkle coat. Here are the steps I went through. 1. Find a paint coat. 2. Find a palomino colour. Apply the colour to all the layers that were originally black. Realise that I picked a terrible shade of mustard, try to find a better colour on the colour wheel, realise I am not good at colour theory, except mustard sporkle for who she is now. Sims 4 does not have this problem. With lots of pretty presets to pick from, they are even easily customizable from the preset screen, with only five different sections to change the colour for. But if you do want to go advanced, you can not only use the fill tool for stencils, you can also freehand draw, erase and stamp your design on. There is even a mirrored and unmirrored options for drawing. This creator is generally much easier for most people to use as it is more simplistic and intuitive. One detail I did really like in The Sims 3 is that it had a little bio section where you can write some information about your Sims and their pets. It's a small detail, but I know I loved writing a little backstory for all of my Sims. Personally, I feel The Sims 4 creator just worked better for me as an individual, but do let me know in the comments which one you preferred. Sims 3 had a pretty decent range of tack, with three types of western saddle, three English saddles, one racing saddle, two English bridles, whatever bridle this is meant to be, two styles of breast collar, and one saddle pad to match each style. And of course, you can customise the colours and patterns on these to a ridiculous extent. One thing I really liked in The Sims 3 is that the horses actually had a lot of outfits. While you could only customise two outfits in the initial creator, once your horses started learning how to jump and race, you would end up with a total of five outfit types. Untacked, leading, everyday, jumping and racing. Sims 4 was a little disappointing in its range of tack. There are only three saddle styles, two bridle styles, two blanket types and a few accessories. Additionally, there are only two outfits compared to Sims 3's total of five outfits. While the general style and textures on this tack is remarkably better than Sims 3, there is a real lack of range and diversity. For the saddles, there is only one English design, but some of the colours make it look more like a racing saddle which is pretty smart. However, there is only really one western saddle as the second one is the same saddle with added saddle bags and bedrolls which are elements I would have preferred to have seen as separate accessories. Both western designs come with a breast collar which is cool 
but I still would have liked to see an option for an English saddle and breast collar. There are only two bridles. Both have a nose band, but the simpler design has no brow band and resembles a halter. The accessories are cool, I really like the bow and flower, but they come in a pitifully small range of colours. While the leg wraps are cute, they go way too far down on the leg and almost swallow the tops of the hooves, so they aren't particularly realistic. I can't help but feel that despite the outdated textures and a little awkward design, Sims 3 had a better range of tack, outfits and accessories. Sims 4 also lacks the option to ride bareback, which is a real shame. Sims 3 animations have aged remarkably well, especially for the horses. The animations can still be a bit janky, and I have noticed that the horses in particular have to really faff around with lining themselves up in order to engage in some animations. While The Sims 4 animations are cleaner and generally more pleasing to watch, there are some core animations missing, and I will get more into that when we discuss gameplay in the next section. Sims 4 certainly has a more goofy and cuter style, while Sims 3 is more parallel to real life, but Sims 3 do suffer from noticeable clipping and texture warping during a lot of the animations. But personally, I do like the Sims 3 animations best. One major difference between both versions is that Sims 4 horses are not playable. In Sims 3, you can click on a horse's icon to play as that horse. This works for cats and dogs as well. This means you can manually do most things without needing to involve a Sim. It also allows you to keep a close eye on the animal's needs and directly cue any action you want. In Sims 4, you can't do this. To effectively control a horse, you need a sim to do almost anything. This means your sim will be pulled away from whatever activity they were doing to ask the horse to go to a location, eat, train, or whatever else you want them to do. Granted, with full autonomy, the horses generally do a good job of taking care of themselves as long as they have everything they need, but it does take away an element that worked really well in The Sims 3. Do tell me in the comments what is your opinion on this topic because I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Both offer grooming and hoof picking, but Sim 3 has the nice added touch of running a hand over the hind end when lifting the back leg, whereas Sims 4 does not. In The Sims 3, you can just feed treat even when you don't have anything edible for your horse in your inventory. The item that appears in your hand looks like a carrot and this mysterious pocket vegetable does give your horse a little hunger boost. Sims 4, to hand feed your horse, you must have an actual item of food to give it. More realistic and I like the idea of growing crops on your land to be able to feed to your horses. The only other care mechanic offered in Sims 3 is scattering hay. This is a really fun little activity where you buy one of the four hay items. Once it is placed, you can go over and scatter hay for the horse to eat. You'll be able to scatter the hay more than once if you place the bigger bales. I just think this is such a neat little activity to enhance the immersion. In The Sims 4, however, you can either pay to fill a trough or fill it with your own produce. Unlike in The Sims 3, horses both poop and pee, so you don't have to clean up the pee, but you will find yourself constantly picking up poo. While this is pretty realistic, it's not the most fun game mechanic, especially when it happens so often. On top of horse care, there are four main things to do with the horses. Training, trail riding, competing, and bonding. I have left the breeding to its own section. Training works very similarly in both games. You tack up, find or build a place to train, and start the activity. However, in The Sims 3, there are only two main skills that you can train on the horses, jumping and racing. In Sims 4, there are four, jumping, speed, endurance, and temperament. Let's first look at jumping and racing. In Sims 3, racing relies on these racing poles. You can create a racetrack as big as you like, but be aware that the AI can sometimes get confused without proper guidance, so generally you need to place the poles in any corners, and sometimes the straights of your track. Personally, I really like making racetracks because you can add all sorts of fencing and terrain paint and decor to make it look really good. Sims 4 does not have standard racing as it was replaced by barrel racing. Initially, I was pretty happy they added this popular western race until I realised it was just two barrels. Actual barrel racing consists of three barrels in a triangular pattern. While the training animation is relatively interesting because you can knock over a barrel and sometimes the barrel will wobble if you hit it, there is no longer a creative element to this activity. This then brings me to the jumping. 
Sims 3 jumping was majorly impressive. Not only could you start your training on cavaletti poles instead of actual jumps, but once you were good enough to do real jumps, you could actually create a whole course. I am not kidding when I said this was the most impressive thing to play. Sure, the AI would sometimes get confused about which jumps to do in which order, but I mean, come on, the fact that this was even a feature was mind-blowing. Then we come to Sims 4. No more cavaletti and no more courses. Reduced to a single vertical or oxa, you can only ride a few strides of canter before the jump and your horse awkwardly resets on the other side to repeat. A really disappointing downgrade in my opinion. Speaking of downgrades, there is another missing feature in The Sims 4 Horses, which is reinforcement. Reinforcement was a powerful tool in The Sims 3 that worked in a very simple way. If your horse did something you liked, you could praise that action or response. If it did something you didn't like, you could scold it. This would then either reinforce the behavior and increase the chance of an extra negative or positive trait. Most negative traits were able to be trained out of the horse if you adopted or bred a foal with that negative trait. In my opinion, Sims 3 had superior training when it came to horses, and while we're on the topic of missing features, you can't even lead horses in Sims 4 when you could in Sims 3. Trail riding is a similar story, but this is mostly down to the fact that Sims 4 does not have an open world, which sucked to begin with. In Sims 3, the entire map was open to explore with no loading screens. This made the game feel more expansive and real, and it really lent itself to the horses because it meant you could ride almost anywhere. If you sent your sim on a trail ride, they would pick various paths throughout the world to traverse and explore. Because I don't have a dedicated section to the map, I just wanted to throw in my two cents here. The Sims 3 pet expansion map, Appaloosa Plains, is simply brilliant. The open world is filled with expansive fields, round pens, paddocks, barns, trails, and so much to explore. But due to the nature of Sims 4, you completely lose this. They have got quite heavy on the western theme, but that's just what it feels like. Theming. It doesn't feel authentic or geared towards horses at all. But back to the topic of trail riding, Sims 4 bypasses the problem of a non-open world by surrounding most plots with an area to ride in. This area can feel quite small, but usually includes a paddock, training grounds, and a few trails. A decent solution to a bigger problem, but that does mean horses are only really usable in Chestnut Ridge, since the other maps just aren't equipped with this workaround. Competing works the same in both games. There is a big competition building that is open at certain times where you can compete. One quality of life that Sims 3 had is that if you were mounted on your horse when you queued the competition, you just ride into the building. In Sims 4, you will always dismount and run in separately. In Sims 3, there are three types of competitions, jumping, racing, and cross country. Cross country required both racing and jumping skills, so it's a nice mix of the two. And there were three base levels you could compete at, beginner, advanced, and international. The actual process of competing in both games kind of sucks since you can't see the competition, but Sims 3 at least had this leaderboard where you can see the rankings and change your competition strategy. This is an interesting feature as it allows you to either play it safe, steady pace, take risks, or go for broke. These strategies could increase the chance that you will go up the rank, but also increase the chance that you drop in the ranking. Unfortunately, in Sims 4, you just watch your sim and horse enter separately and just wait for them to come out. However, in The Sims 4, there are four competition types, bower racing, endurance, show jumping, and western pleasure. These all have four levels, beginner, intermediate, expert, and master. Other than that, they're pretty much just a checklist activity that can earn you a bit of cash. I won't spend too much time on the nature of bonding since it's generally just do actions that increase friendship and don't be mean, but I will say that Sims 4 interactions feel way more hashtag random hashtag quirky than Sims 3 interactions do. Discuss possible time travel with a horse, get stable gossip straight from the horse's mouth, or tell a joke are quite funny at first, but after playing Sims 3, they just feel a bit goofy compared to the strictly realistic actions like petting and letting sniff hand. In Sims 3, there are a total of five horse trait slots, but only three are customizable in Creator Sim. The other two can only be trained into that horse. 
There are 19 total traits that your horse can have, all of which should be listed on screen right now. The traits are quite complex, since some you can't train in or out of a horse, such as clueless or shy. Each trait will have some kind of effect on how the horse behaves, interacts with others, and how certain actions affect their mood. For example, a nervous horse is very likely to get the startled moodlet from things like thunderstorms. Generally, traits have quite a strong influence on your horse and how they interact with the world. In Sims 4, there are only 11 traits and 3 traits slots. You can't train traits in or out of the horse, and from what I can gather, they don't have many neutral traits that Sims 3 had. Sims 4 traits feel more skill-oriented. The negative traits really feel negative because of the fact that they can't be corrected or trained away. I will certainly have to do more research into the behaviours of horses, but generally, I do feel Sims 3 horse traits are more in-depth and fleshed out than their recent counterpart. Breeding in Sims 3 works like this. If a mare and stallion are in good standing relationship, they can try for foal. There needs to be a stable nearby that is away from other horses. Both mare and stallion will enter the stable, then a really weird blur will appear. The biggest downside to Sims 3 breeding is that after the mare and stallion breed, they become mates. Which means you cannot breed this pair with any other horse forever. This isn't particularly realistic since horses don't mate for life and it can be pretty frustrating when you want to start a complex breeding program because you can't. Sims 4, the breeding process is much more elegant. You can encourage the horse to breed with the opposite gender and if they do, there is this lovely nuzzling animation with hearts and fireworks and sparkles. Thankfully, you can also breed horses with multiple partners. Sims 3 mares are unfortunately not visibly pregnant, but Sims 4 have the cutest pregnant belly on the mares. In both games, you have to name the foal before seeing it, but at least they tell you the gender. Actual foal genetics is where things go south. On one end of the extreme, we have Sims 3, which hard combines the mother and father's coats to create some really wacky and weird coat patterns on the foals. This is also where the mad amount of creation for horse coats runs into a wall because any individual layer may be transferred to the foal, making this weird looking guy from Sporkle and Jericho. On the other end, we have the blandest solution to this problem, where Sims 4 has two combinations. Mother's coat, father's mane and tail, or father's coat and mother's mane and tail. I'm just gonna say it. Both of these outcomes suck. Sims 3 is just too randomized and Sims 4 has absolutely no variety. Generally, just play Rival Stars if you like playing with genetics. I just wanted to quickly touch on the topic of items and stuff. Both packs come with these ranch themed clothes, hair and accessories, but let's have a look at the build mode items. In Sims 4, this pack adds 200 new items from wallpaper to sofas to decor. But one thing I couldn't help but notice is that this only adds a few horse related decor. The rest are just ranch themed TM. In terms of non-functional decor, we have the saddle rack, a hay carpet, a tack box storage, and this admittedly really cool trailer. Sims 3 gives you a hanging horseshoe, grooming box, buckets, hanging lasso, sawhorse, hanging bridles, and four different saddle racks. Currently, that's four horse-related decor in Sims 4 and 10 in Sims 3. Then, the list gets even more pitiful for Sims 4 when we look at functional horse items. We have a ball, which I have yet to get working, the barrel set, another barrel set, but this time it's rustic, a jump, another jump but this time it's rustic, grass that they can graze on because normal grass won't work for some reason, a feeder, water trough and a bed. That's a whopping 9 functional items if you include the duplicates. In Sims 3 we had 4 types of hay bales, a water trough, cavaletti poles, racing poles, a jump, a salt lake, a ball that works, a pole jump, a wall jump, a vertical jump, another jump, a stall, a hitching post, a flaming jump ring, another hitching post, a water jump, a pyro jump, and yet another stall. Yeah. I personally do like the new horse beds in Sims 4 though, as they allow for a fully customizable stall, unlike in Sims 3 where you just had the presets. However, considering that Sims 4 is a dedicated horse pack, and Sims 3 horses are part of a larger pet pack, 
it is a little embarrassing to say the least. Overall, The Sims 4 horse pack was overdue, but I did find myself growing more and more disappointed as I researched for this video. Sims 3 didn't release a horse pack, they released a pet pack that included more features, interactions and items than the dedicated Sims 4 pack. However, Sims 3 is something of the past now and unless you have nostalgia or the patience to download 200 plus mods, you might find Sims 4 Horses is more palatable in its graphic style. What do you guys think of both packs and what would you have liked to see in the Sims 4 pack? Let me know in the comments below. So I hope you guys enjoyed, stay positive and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.